What's up everyone, Marco here from PhoneDog.com and last week Apple announced an education focused event taking place on March 27th in Chicago and here are my predictions of what we could expect from that education focused event. The last time an education event has gone on was back in 2012 so it's been quite some time since the last education focused event and hopefully we'll be seeing some much needed updates and refreshers to some of its existing lineup and maybe even a few new product lines from the Apple side. So let's dive into it. So you probably noticed those really annoying ads that Apple's been running for their iPad Pro saying that it's really replacing your computer. And I think Apple's really gonna nail that statement forward at this event by introducing even less expensive iPads. The best value iPad you could buy today is the iPad 9.7 at $329. You're getting really good hardware, a great display. Yes, it's not laminated, but the most important thing is the hardware on the inside is very good and it's the most affordable iPad you can buy today. And I think the uh, new iPad 9.7 is gonna be even less expensive, maybe even $269 is the number I've heard, but it might be less expensive, better hardware, maybe new cameras, and we may even see some uh, new software and hardware features. One hardware feature that we might see on the new iPad 9.7 is the smart connector that will be barred off the iPad Pros, and that will open up to some new hardware lines from Apple, maybe even a new keyboard for the iPads, uh, maybe even some new smart connector features, and quite even possibly Apple Pencil support on this new inexpensive iPad. Now the Apple Pencil for this iPad Pro won't be the same Apple Pencil that is currently uh, for sale for $100 because it's a pretty expensive price, especially when you're doing a budget level device, but we may see a very cheap alternative, probably less build quality and all that kind of stuff, something that particularly only works for that iPad, maybe different technology, maybe the latency might be a little different, uh, but it would be very interesting to see what will happen happen on the pencil side of things because well the invitation looks like it was scribbled or sketched with a pencil so we may even see uh, an apple pencil too and this apple pencil will slot down and become cheaper who knows the most important thing is i'm pretty sure that the new cheap ipads will support the pencil whatever that is now sticking with ipad hardware we may even see a refresher of the ipad mini uh, it's been forever since the iPad mini, but the most current iPad mini is the iPad mini 4. If we see an update to that, that would be great. If not, then maybe it's completely dead. Who knows? But we may see a refresher of that iPad mini 4 or iPad mini, whatever you want to call it. Maybe the new iPad mini, whatever it's going to be called. Uh, maybe we'll get a new one, maybe not. Who knows? Now this event is gonna be an education focused event, which in my opinion is a little bit more budget friendly because we're talking about students, educators, uh, things that like school districts wanna buy for an entire district, not just one household. So probably not gonna see any new iPad Pro uh, announcements at this event that will probably be reserved for WWDC or sometime later in 2018 when we're seeing you know less bezel iPads or Face ID and all that kind of stuff, probably won't be happening at this event. On the software side of things, ClassKit is going to be announced at this event, which will allow educators and other developers to develop applications, uh, particularly for school applications. So basically like testing software, all that kind of stuff, just a new form of uh, tools that developers can use to develop applications uh, quickly and efficiently and have it available on iOS devices, particularly iPads. Now, if the new inexpensive iPads do come with smart connectors, you will probably see a cheaper alternative to a keyboard that Apple will make for that new iPad. So we'll definitely see some kind of hardware in terms of that line, or maybe they'll partner up with a third party developer to develop some uh, inexpensive and very good quality uh, keyboards for that less expensive iPad. Now this year also marks the 10th anniversary of the MacBook Air. It actually just passed a couple weeks ago. Uh, there are some rumors on a new 13.3 inch MacBook Air, kind of the slot between the 12 inch MacBook and the 13.3 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, rumors say that it will be featuring a retina display with uh, less, I guess, hardware in terms of prowess. Um, and who knows where it's gonna be priced. I mean, currently the MacBook Air is still not retina. Uh, the hardware is not very good. I mean, it, it's, the, it's the slowest computer you can buy. I mean, in my opinion, if you're in between like basically a MacBook 
and a MacBook Air, I'll tell you to go buy the MacBook or the non-touch bar MacBook Pro at the same price as the uh, MacBook. So um, we'll see if we'll see a new Air. I mean, maybe we will, maybe it's completely dead. I think that they're gonna definitely do something since it is the 10th anniversary of the MacBook Air announcement. And it was such a huge product back then uh, that it'd be a shame to see the moniker kind of uh, let go, honestly. So we'll cross our fingers. Hopefully we'll see some new MacBook Air hardware released at this event. And it'll probably be more education focused as well. So it'll be cheaper, hopefully higher quality, hopefully we'll get a retina display and some good specs. The last announcement I could expect to see at this event is going to be a complete revamping of the iBooks application. Honestly, it's probably just going to be called Apple Books and not iBooks anymore. And it's just going to be revamped, updated, maybe to match the uh, new App Store uh, kind of like color scheme and stuff. So that's what you could expect at the Apple Education event here Tuesday, March 27th. Hopefully we'll see some more surprises. Uh, if not, then I guess that's what we get. And we definitely have a lot more Apple events going on in the rest of the years. We had got WWDC and their normal September, October timeframe, uh, iPhone announcement and other hardware announcements that they usually do throughout the year. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button below and subscribe to the Phone Dog YouTube channel. My name is Mark O'Hanna, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.